So good to see you today. Thanks for being here. I trust, I hope you've had a good weekend. I'm, I'm glad you're here this morning and we have this opportunity to worship together. The scripture for today is from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work all by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks to God. So Luke said, as they went on their way, on their way down that road, headed to Jerusalem. While they were on that way, uh, Jesus was rejected by a Samaritan town that wouldn't let him come and stay there. Uh, there were some would-be disciples who came along beside him and made promises, but Jesus made it kind of hard on them so they would know that this was not going to be an easy journey. And then a lawyer came up to Jesus and asked him questions about what it meant to be a neighbor and finally, who is my neighbor? And now Jesus receives an invitation from a woman named Mary to come and have supper in her house. She has a or, or woman named Martha is the one who gave her the invitation. She has a sister named Mary. And in John's gospel, we're told they have a brother named Lazarus, but Lou doesn't mention him at all. He just mentions the two sisters. And uh, so Martha is busy preparing the meal for Jesus while Mary sits in the living room where Jesus is teaching on the floor, listening to everything Jesus has to say. It's important not to miss how radical Jesus is in his social habits. Uh, in those days, a rabbi would have never accepted the invitation from a woman to go to her home uh, with his disciples and eat. Uh, many of them would have considered this to be completely scandalous to do such a thing. And you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to me as I was reading this, I remember when I first became a pastor, there were some older pastors who told me, don't ever have lunch with a female because that's inappropriate for you to do. And I was taught that. And actually, I did that at first. That was kind of my rules. That that's something you don't do. Now, I believe in having boundaries. And I think that a candlelight dinner with someone who's not your spouse in a dark corner somewhere is not a good idea. <laughs> but a public lunch in a busy restaurant um, is, is a totally different story. And uh, as, I, as I began to think about that, I realized, you know, actually this is, this is discriminating uh, against women because they're out in the workplace trying to, you know, make a living too. And, you know, some business deals happen over lunch. So uh, that just seemed to me to be a bit of a stretch. And uh, it, it seems to me like two adults ought to be able to have lunch in a restaurant crowded with people and be able to carry on a business uh, discussion and that be all it is. And so, you know, I realized that, you know, we have this never-ending capacity to come up with rules that make us look spiritual, and then sometimes they're often harmful or discriminatory toward others. You know, we ask that question, what would Jesus do? Well, Jesus would accept the invitation because he did. <laughs> A woman invited him to lunch, and he went. That's what Jesus would do. And so he and the disciples went to her home. And Mary was sitting at his feet. And again, women were usually excluded from teaching. When, when there was someone teaching in the room, they, they had to leave. And yet Jesus, um, not, only, um, not only is she allowed to stay in the room, but Jesus commends her for choosing to stay in the room. Jesus always put people before social restrictions, even religious ones. And if the social restrictions excluded someone... Jesus just ignored them and went on, went on and did what was important. So we have this age-old picture here of Martha and Mary. And, you know, most sermons I've heard, you know, preachers pit them against each other. 
You know, Martha is the type A workaholic who's got to get all the work done and all these things. And Mary is the one who has time for spiritual things in her lives to sit and listen at Jesus. And, and then preachers, of course, always side with Mary, you know, because she does the spiritual thing and because, you know, we're a little lazy. I have a friend who's a pastor and someone asked him once, how did you know God called you to be a pastor? He said, I woke up one morning craving fried chicken and didn't want to go to work. So I knew that was it. And so, um, you know, why go help Martha in the kitchen when you can go to Bible study, right? So, uh, but then there's some who side with Martha and they say, well, if everybody acted like Mary, there would be no food to eat. Uh, you know, there, there's things that have to be done and sometimes it's more spiritual to get up and mow the grass than it is to go to another Bible study. And so there, there are both sides of the issue. And I don't believe that um, Luke means to portray either Martha or Mary as better than the other. I think Luke is simply showing us that at different times we need to make different decisions. I mean, Martha invited Jesus over for a meal. So now there's a meal to prepare. You don't invite somebody over and feed them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There's work to be done now. You know, Mary never invited Jesus over for a meal. Mary just wanted to hang out with him and be there and hear what he had to say. And so they, they're, they're kind of two different things going on. And, um, you know, Mary didn't say anything about a meal. She just wanted to, to be there with Jesus. And women didn't often get to stay in the room. And, and Jesus would let her stay in the room. So she didn't want to leave. She didn't want to miss out. So Jesus is in the living room teaching. And Mary is uh, sitting there at his feet. Martha is in the kitchen. And she's chopping up vegetables there on the island. And through the doorway, she can see Jesus sitting in a chair. And she can see Mary sitting at his feet, looking up at him, listening. And she starts chopping those vegetables with a little more force. <laughs> and she thinks, why am I in here doing all the work? And there's Mary. Mary sitting out there, not helping me at all. Mary is always daydreaming. Mary's always got something else to do instead of the hard work that needs to be done. So why is she out there, sitting there listening to Jesus, and I'm in here preparing this meal, and then she cut the last uh, piece, and the, the, this last chop made a piece of cucumber fly across the room and hit the kitchen wall. And then Martha marched into the living room and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work myself? Tell her to come help me. And that felt good to get that off her chest. Let Jesus know how she felt and rat on her sister who wasn't doing anything to help her. Now, Cindy and I raised three daughters. I want you to know I have heard this conversation. I know exactly how it goes. Mom, my sisters aren't helping me. I'm in here doing all the work. I do all the work. They don't do anything. I have heard that. I know exactly how that is. And of course, as a parent, though, you aren't really interested in justice. You just want peace, right? And so, uh, you know, mom goes in the kitchen to deal with it while dad sits in the living room at the feet of the TV watching football, <laughs> believing that he has chosen what is best <laughs> and hoping it will not be taken away from him. <laughs> so I believe it's with compassion that Jesus smiles at Martha. And he says, Martha, Martha, you're so worried and upset about so many things, but only a few are needed, indeed only one. And Mary has chosen what's best, and it won't be taken away from her. So Luke told us Martha was distracted. Jesus said she was worried and upset. But, but it wasn't her desire uh, to prepare the meal that was the problem. Uh, she allowed her work to distract her from what was really important. And, and it, it's really interesting. She started out to do this meal for Jesus. 
That's why she wanted to make this meal for Jesus. It was a good thing. It was, it was a wonderful thing. But then the actual preparation of the meal distracted her from why she was doing it. And you know, that can happen to us in church. We can decide to, to be involved in some ministry because we love Jesus and we love people and we want to help. And then we get started and we look around and we see people who aren't doing as much as we are. They aren't pulling their fair share. And they're not giving as much as we are. And we're having to do the work. And pretty soon we start to resent those other folks who aren't doing their part. And then we start to resent having to do whatever it is we're doing. And what started out as a pure joy that we were doing just because we love Jesus turns into something we resent because we've become distracted and forgotten why we're doing it. Linda Stone is a technologist. She says that the disease of the internet age is continuous partial attention. We have a hard time focusing and we get distracted by so many things. I think it's interesting. Martha said, tell Mary, <laughs> she needs to help me. But Jesus didn't say a word to Mary. Jesus just spoke to Martha. And I think how, you know, how often it, it's, it's like that because we, we want Jesus to straighten other people out, don't we? <laughs> Jesus, tell Carl he needs to come to church more. Jesus, tell Marie she needs to ease up on her drinking. Jesus, tell my sister to grow up. I always think it's funny at the end of a sermon on judging, someone will walk by me and say, that was a great sermon about judging, preacher. I wish my brother had been here because he needed to hear that. <laughs> Sick him, Jesus. I read a story about an imam who was teaching the Quran to, 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 to a bunch of students, and his son was a member of the group. And um, at one point, there was a long period of meditation, and his son noticed that all the students in the room had fallen asleep, except for him and his father. And with a lot of pride, he looked at his father, and he said, see how everyone else has fallen asleep. Only you and I have stayed awake to meditate properly. And his father said, I would rather my son fall asleep while meditating than judge his brothers. It's with compassion that Jesus calls us by name like he did Martha. And he says, you just worry too much about other people. Just worry about your own soul. Trust the rest to me. That's what he says to Martha and to us. So here are these two sisters. One is doing good things but gets distracted. The other stops what she's doing to sit down and listen to Jesus. And in this instance, Jesus says that she has chosen the right thing, that Mary chose the better because it was time to listen. Now, I think Luke placed the story of Martha and Mary immediately after the story of the Good Samaritan, the lawyer in that parable of the Good Samaritan, for a reason. Because these two stories balance each other. And I think we need to hear them both together. While Jesus was walking down the road to Jerusalem, this lawyer, who spent a lot of time thinking and studying and talking about the law, came up to Jesus and asked him a question. And Jesus said to him, you know, you need to quit talking about the law and you need to actually do something. You need to actually reach out and do something and help other people and love your neighbor. And then Martha and Mary are busy. Martha's preparing a meal for Jesus and Mary comes and sits at Jesus' feet to listen. And Jesus basically says to Martha, it's okay what your sister's done because there's a time to just sit down and listen. There's a time to just be in God's presence and hear what God has to say. There's a time to work, and there's a time to rest and listen. And they're both important. You know, I can't. Every, every time I read this story about 
Martha and Mary, I'm reminded of this story that I heard uh, about a preacher who was invited home uh, with a, for a family, you know, after lunch or after the church service. He was invited to a family's home to have dinner. And uh, that, that, that morning, the sermon was one of those scathing fire and brimstone sermons about working on Sunday, on the Sabbath, which, of course, he took to mean Sunday. And uh, it was, you know, it was a stem winder. Now, those sermons on sin and hell, they just seem to write themselves, you know. And uh, so he, he was letting go, and he finished, and they went over to their house, and she gave him some tea and a cold sandwich. <laughs> she said, I was going to prepare you a nice meal, but after that sermon, I figured I shouldn't work on Sunday. <laughs> there is great need in our lives for both doing and listening. And if we think we're supposed to do just one or the other, then we distort the gospel because God calls us to do both. When you see a man in a ditch, it's time to go over and help, to do something. But then when Jesus has something to say to us, it's time to sit down and listen, like Mary. And so it's, it's time to overcome our distractions and focus on Jesus and just being with him. Fred Craddock is right. If we were to ask which example applies to us, the Samaritan or Mary, Jesus would say, yes. They both do because they are both important. And, and so the, the story of the Samaritan reminds us that God expects us to do things, not just talk about God, but actually live in a way that honors God and meets the needs of those around us. He expects us to put into practice what we know. And then the story of Mary reminds us that there are times we sometimes need to just sit down and listen and be with God and hear what God has to say. It's not a scriptural warrant for allowing the dishes to pile high while we read the Bible, but it's a reminder that all of us need time that we spend with God where we just listen. I believe that God has spoken to us this morning. And to some, God has said, you talk a lot about the right thing. Now it's time to do it. You've been saying you're going to make God more important in your life. Now it's time to actually do that. That's God's word to you. Get up and go love God and love your neighbor. To some, God has said, you have been really busy and you've gotten distracted. Maybe even distracted with religious things. And you haven't really spent any time just listening to God. Just praying and, and trying to hear what God may have to say. And you want to go do things, but you don't want to just sit down and listen and spend time with God. Put, make a time in your schedule again where you just spend time with God. And God's word to you is, start scheduling some time to pray and to be with God and to listen and, and to just let God love you. To just know that time in your life. I like the way Richard Vincent put it. He said, salvation, the good news that sets us free and heals us, is not only for the man in the ditch, but it's for the woman who is busily preparing the meal for the visiting minister. It's for all of us. The road to Jerusalem is long, and on that road there will be time to work, and on that road there will be time to rest. Our journey with Jesus is long. And on that journey, there will be time to work. And there will be time to rest. What time is it for you?